Hello, my Italian food fanatics. Today, we're going to make one of my favorite pasta dishes. It's papradelle in a non-cooked lemon sauce with basil and mint and hot peppers and Parmesan cheese and 100% California olive oil. How sweet it is. It's going to be one of the most refreshing and delicious pastas that you've ever eaten. I promise you. It's a summer thing, too. I'll explain more about it in just a moment. But before we go into the kitchen and I show you how to make this very easy pasta dish, um, please hit the thumbs up button, like, subscribe, hit that bell button uh, so you'll know when I will release a new video, which is almost every single day of the week, believe it or not, Monday through Friday. And leave a comment down below if you want. I'd love to interact with you. Tell me what you think if you made this. Um, nice comments or inquisitive comments. If you want to talk about, oh, you know, you need to add more salt or you need to do this or need to do that, that's nice. I'm the one that's cooking. I'm the one that's tasting. I'll decide that for myself. If you want to add more salt in yours, then you go right ahead. It's a free world. You're a free person and I want you to exercise your free will and do whatever you want. Okay? Anyway, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the kitchen, and I'm going to show you how to make it. You're going to love it. All right, my Italian food fanatics, we are back. Put a little flame underneath our sauce pot. And you know me, if you know me at all, you know that I like to use about four cups of water in a saucepan to cook any pasta, because I'm after a concentration of starches in the pasta water, and also, I don't want to use so much salt. And also, I don't want it to take too long for this water to come back to a boil when you put the pasta in. All right? You don't need to use copious amounts of water. You don't need to use fancy salt. It's just water and salt in a saucepan. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. We'll wait for it to boil, and we'll be back. All right, my Italian food fanatics, our water has come to a boil. We are now going to add our salt. It's two teaspoons of regular old everyday table salt. You don't have to use kosher salt. You don't have to use rock salt. You don't have to use Persian blue salt or Hawaiian black salt or Pakistani pink salt, uh, Himalayan pink salt. It's actually mined in Pakistan in Islamabad because the Himalayas end in near in and around near Islamabad Pakistan believe it or not check it out for yourself if you don't believe me but there's a big salt mine there now we're going to add our papradelle I'm going to add about three of these little baskets of them and we'll give them a little bit of a mix just like this now People are going to complain, oh, you know, you're not using enough water. I'm using plenty of water. I know what I've been doing. I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for probably a lot longer than most people. And uh, you're going to say, well, you know, the pasta is going to stick together. No, the pasta is not going to stick together. It's going to be just fine. In fact, it's almost back up to a boil, something that you're not going to find if you're going to use copious amounts of water. Um, you will notice that the water does not come back to a boil as fast because it takes a lot more energy to bring a larger amount of water back to a boil than it does a small amount of water. And so we're going to break these <clears throat> we're going to break these nests up. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can see how they break up pretty easily. Now, all that needs to happen is the outside layer of these starches need to gel and that happens in the first 30 seconds to a minute of cooking all right and they won't stick to one another you don't really even have to mind them in fact you can cook pasta at below a boil at a little over 180 degrees Fahrenheit that is without the water boiling and the pasta will not stick together and it will cook just fine uh, most people don't know that. They have been, again, like sheeps to the slaughter, been fed a lot of crapola by so-called experts in the field. 
Now in a restaurant, you're going to have a table that has pasta water boiling constantly. All right. So if you're getting your idea from that, um, it's it's fine. That's the way they do it in the restaurants. But at home, it's a different type of a program. So I'm showing you how to do it in the most efficient and fastest way possible. So we're going to let this uh, boil away here for about 10 minutes, and we'll be now making our sauce that will go along with the pasta. All right, my Italian food fanatics, as always, you're in for a treat. Let's make this pasta. We're going to use some Parmigiano Reggiano. Always use the real deal, believe it or not. There's really no substitute for it. People have tried. It just doesn't work. They have, they have something special over there, and uh, it's the king of cheeses. Let's put it that way. However, we will be using 100% California extra virgin olive oil. We'll use one lemon. We use a couple of these very, very hot chilies. Some pappardelle. Now this is uh, pappardelle that has uh, been extruded through bronze dyes. You can see, I don't know if you can see very well, but it's very, very rough. And it's a really high quality pappardelle. And so, you know me, I'm a quality and quantity person. <laughs> Unfortunately, in some instances. We're also going to be using some basil, some mint, and to top it off, breadcrumbs. Uh, I've done videos on how to make these breadcrumbs. I'm not going to show you how they're made today. So you can search from, for that video if you're interested, all right? It's very simple. It's just, these are panko. You put the breadcrumbs in a skillet. You drizzle a little bit of olive oil on there and then move them around until they're golden brown. Very, very simple. I don't even add salt. And there's a reason for that is because you, you don't want to have something like uh, breadcrumbs that are already salted when you're going to use it on various dishes, all right? Um, it can be salted, but it's not, in my opinion, not necessary. All right. And we'll be back. All right, my Italian food fanatics, let's get started. The pasta is already on and going. All right, and uh, this pappardelle takes about 10 minutes to come to al dente. And that's the only thing in this entire pasta that's going to be cooked. Everything else is going to be raw. So while the pasta is cooking away, we can make the accoutrement or the sauce for this particular dish. I take a zester and into the same bowl that you are going to mix the pasta in, we are going to zest one lemon, all right? This is gonna be enough for about two people. And you wanna kind of try to avoid, you see this spot that I've avoided and I've avoided this spot too. These are organic lemons. They're gonna not come perfect. They're gonna be different shapes and sizes. And so it's important that we take that into consideration. Now, I don't like using a rasp grater uh, to, to, uh, to get the skin off of citrus fruits. I think it's kind of clumsy. You got to hold it upside down and then it slips out of your hand and you can only get small areas. It takes all day. I use this zester that I've had for a number of years, more actually a couple, three decades, believe it or not. It has very, very small holes and it doesn't go down very, very far. You can see how this particular zester uh, doesn't go into the pith or anything like that. Not that that would matter because the bitterness is not in the pith. The bitterness actually is formed when the cell walls are broken on the skin and the volatile oils mix with uh, some of the other compounds that are in the skin. That's what creates the bitterness. There's no real way around it. The pith itself has zero flavor at all. So don't believe these cookbook authors who don't know what they're talking about when they say that the pith is bitter. In fact, don't believe me. Try it out for yourself. Go get a lemon, cut the top portion off so that, and then pull the, the, the fruit away and just eat the pith and you'll see it tastes like nothing. So 
we will continue to zest this. Now I like to zest it into the bowl. Why? Because all of those volatile oils are falling into the bowl. Um, now there are instances where I have to zest and put it on the board and then chop the zest. But you can see these are very, very small ribbons and um, I kind of like the way they're, you know, the length of them when you're eating the pasta. It's a more rustic pasta. This is a pasta, as I've mentioned earlier, that you're going to have during the summer. Um, and it's something you can make on the fly and it's delicious. Now we will juice the lemon. I'll be back with the juicer in once. All right, now we have our juicer. This is actually a good one. This is a phenomenal juicer. You can find a link to that on my website in the store. It's an affiliate link, uh, but that's the proper one to get, not the really El Cheapo ones that are coming out of, uh, uh, th these are probably made in China as well, but uh, there's some real El Cheapo ones that are no good. We now just cut the lemon in half. Now it's important, <laughs> you don't have to do it, but zesting your lemons prior to squeezing the juice ensures that you'll get the most yield out of your lemons, believe it or not. When you zest them, they, uh, the skin is taken off, of course, but it's now easier for more of the lemon to get squeezed and your yield on juice is going to be better uh, because of it. So we'll take this and we'll put it inside of the machine or the, the device. It's not really a machine. And I also like to hold it inside of the bowl like this and squeeze. Why? Because those volatile compounds are going to come out as well. And even though it's not a lot, okay, I believe in being completely thorough. All right. Now, look at this. This is supposed to be something that eliminates the seeds, but it doesn't. It never does. None of these do because seeds can get through. Depending on the size of the lemon, depending on the type of lemon, um, you're going to get all kinds of anomalies. So that's to be expected. If it were uh, a little bit later in the season, it's now March for me, um, I would use the Meyer lemons to do this because they're sweeter and uh, it's more indicative of a lemon that you would find on the Amalfi Coast, which is where this dish theoretically originates. This is an amalgamation of the North and the South. So now, now that we have our lemon juice in there, we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil, all right? Uh, just about enough to coat the pasta about that so <clears throat> this is going to this is going to change depending on the amount of lemon juice and the type of lemon juice at all and also your tolerance for olive oil i love olive oil i love 100 percent california extra virgin olive oil and so consequently we're going to mix it in there also i like a little bit more tartness to this particular sauce as opposed to too much oil. So I tend to go a little bit lighter on the oil. You'll have to adjust to your own taste. Again, also the type of lemon matters. If it's a sweeter lemon, quote unquote, well then you might want to use less olive oil. All right. If you don't like it as tart, you're going to use more olive oil. It's to your taste. And that's the great thing about this particular pasta dish. It's very versatile. And you'll know more about that in just a second. So let's get on to uh, the chilies and then the herbs and the cheese. We'll be back in a second. All right, my Italian food fanatics, we're back. And now we're going to fabricate these chilies. These chilies are extremely hot. All right. You can use the dried chilies if you want. I just happen to have access to these fresh chilies. And so that's the reason why I'm going to use them. You've got to be very careful when you're cutting small uh, small vegetables like this because you don't want to cut your hand all right now I'm kind of used to it and the other thing too is is that you may want to do all of this before you put the pasta uh, in but I can make pretty quick work of all of this stuff so it can be done uh, for me anyway while it's all while the pasta is cooking some people may prefer to do this in advance 
including uh, grating the cheese and all that sort of thing. But uh, for this uh, for this variation of pasta, I don't really see it as being necessary. But I will do this. I am going to remove those seeds out of there, okay? And with it, part of the membrane is going to go. And the reason why is because, like I said, these are extremely hot chilies. If you have chilies that are not that hot, um, and you can use any type if you want. I'm using the red here because for color contrast inside of the final dish. Capsaicin is capsaicin. So the heat that you're going to get from, a, say, a green chili or a habanero chili or any other type of chili is essentially the same. Again, we're just going to go for color here. All right, I like the red color because everything else is green. Um, well, of course, the, the majority, the, the two herbs that we're going to use, the basil and uh, mint, are green. So we just put everything together, and I'm going to give these a nice chop like this. And I like to chop them pretty fine. I want them to go literally everywhere. And that does that. So now this also goes into the bowl. And there are a couple of little seeds in there. That's not a big deal. But if you really, really want to be thorough, you don't have to. Remember, this is something that you make on the fly. This is a quick dish that's made on the fly while the pasta cooks. I can't reiterate that enough. All right, so you can just chop all of this stuff in. None of it's cooked. None of it's even heated up. And it's important that you use a smaller bowl, not a big bowl, because what will end up happening is when that pasta goes in, the heat will quickly dissipate. This is one of those dishes. It's extremely important that when you mix the pasta in, that you do it as fast as possible and serve it up as fast as possible because it gets cold quickly, and you don't want that. Of course, this dish is designed to be eaten on a very, very hot day, and so consequently, the rapid cooling of the pasta, to a certain extent, is not a bad thing, okay? But the reason why this is so good is because you have the hot, you have the tartness from the lemon, you have a little bit of oil, you have fresh herbs, and none of it's cooked. It's very, very refreshing. It's one of the, in my opinion, uh, one of the best pastas that you'll ever eat. And there are many variations, as I said before, and we'll get to all of that in just a second. Now it's time to do the herbs. We'll be right back. All right, my Italian food fanatics, we're back with the herbs. And I'm going to do this a little bit differently than I may normally do um, when I'm making this for myself. But this is what I typically tend to do, and I like it a little bit better. I'm going to take the basil, and we are going to chop up the basil pretty fine. We're going to do a chiffonade first. A chiffonade, as you'll see, is in ribbons. I should really do a video on the different types of cuts and things like that. But we're going to just take the, we'll take the basil like this. In Italy, what they would end up doing is just tearing the basil and throwing it in the bowl. But we're going to, we have a little bit of time. I'm pretty good with a knife. And so what I like to do is, since we're using two different herbs, I like to cut one up and then the other one the mint in this case we are going to tear and put it into the bowl so that there are two different textures of these herbs and of course two different tastes as well okay hopefully the camera is not shaking too bad while I do this but that's pretty quick okay should take you literally a couple of minutes to put this whole sauce together I know the video is a lot longer, but I explain as I go. And there's nothing to say that you can't just very roughly chop the basil very, very quickly and just toss it in the bowl, okay? That there's no, there are no essential rules here of you have to chop this fine, you have to do this, you have to do that. There's zero rules in this particular type of sauce. Now we're going to take the mint and... Just tear it like this. I mean, how easy could that be? All right. And I like to do this individually, believe it or not. 
Uh, it seems like, oh, well, you know, why don't you do the same thing you did with the basil and put it all together? I like to make sure that these are all in small pieces and then we're not getting these weird uh, sizes. And look, you can do this, well, you should do this while the pasta cooks, so why rush? You can actually sit and enjoy the process of making the delicious food that you are about to consume. Let me tell you, I'm excited about this. This is, like I mentioned earlier, one of my favorite pastas. I just absolutely adore it. But I live in an area where there's a lot of hot, it's, you know, the climate is pretty hot most of the year. Uh, we have two seasons here in Southern California, spring and summer. That's it. We don't really have a fall and we don't really have a winter. Other than the days getting shorter, you would never know the difference between spring and fall. So there we go. Now we're going to grate some cheese in there, and I'll be right back to do that. All right, my Italian food fanatics, we're back. And I've got to be honest, I've been nibbling on this cheese here because it's so delicious. I'm going to take a, a little hand grater. This is my favorite of all the hand graters, believe it or not, because it does have a nice base to it that you can grate off of and also different sizes. Um... I'll put a link to it if you want one. It should be on my website, chefgsa.com. It's an affiliate link. I don't sell them personally, but they I think they're great. It's made by Zillis or Xylus, whatever you want to call them. And again, I'm not being paid to uh, push their products. I just like, I will talk about a great product if there's a great product, and this happens to be one of them. All right. So we've grated a little bit of cheese in there. Knock it off just like this. And now we're going to mix this stuff in. You don't need to, but I'll mix it in to show you. This kind of tightens everything up a little bit. You don't want it to be too tight. There is a case where there can be too much cheese in here, okay? Parmigiano Reggiano is just like Pecorino, especially Pecorino is better used in smaller amounts so as not to overpower anything. We want to accentuate flavor, not cover it with something else. All of the different flavors in here stand on their own beautifully. So you don't want to mute one flavor in favor of another flavor. All right? So there we go. I don't normally do this, but I want to just show you the consistency that you're trying to achieve. So there's a little bit of wetness, because remember, we're going to get water from the pasta coming into here too. Not too much, but just a little bit. You don't want too much of the pasta water in here. You'll see what I mean in a second. It's now ready for the pasta to be put in, and we'll do that next. All right, my Italian food fanatics, our pasta is now just done, and we are going to add it into our sauce. All right, or our condimentes, that is what it's called. There it is, that's everything. And now we wanna mix around very, very well. So I'm not gonna add any pasta water into this. The pasta water that has come off of the pasta itself is more than enough. You can see how it's very, very liquidy in there, right? All right, so we mix this around. And that's basically it. Can you believe it? We're now, believe it or not, ready to plate this up. And we'll do that in two seconds. It's important that you keep this in a very small bowl. And it's also very important that it is served immediately after it's made. Otherwise, as I've said earlier, it's going to lose its heat. That may be a good thing depending on where you live. Could be It, do, it doesn't taste bad when it's warm. But I don't like cold pasta personally. I don't mind it warm. I love it hot. But uh, I don't like it cold. So if we move this around just a little bit, the more we move it around, the more the heat dissipates. So you want to move it around as fast as possible before. And there's a reason why we make the condiment or the sauce uh, after the pasta goes on the boil. is because lemon juice loses its mojo very, very quickly. Within a half an hour, it could be gone. So you don't want to make this in advance. You want to make it as soon as the pasta goes in. Oh, 
All right, my Italian food fanatics. The time has come. Here's the dish. You saw me plate it up at the beginning of the video. Let me tell you, like I said, it's one of my favorites. I just absolutely adore this pasta. Uh, it reminds me, it's an, actually an amalgamation of all kinds of different pastas because pappardelle is something that you're going to find in the north. Look, my mouth is already watering because of that lemon. Or I know what's coming and it's going to be out of this world. For me personally, it just, it doesn't get better than that. The pasta is perfectly cooked. It's al dente, which is the way that I like it. It's a little bit chewy, the, chewier than what most people are used to, uh, are used to eating. This, because of the filming, has cooled down a little bit. I prefer it a little bit warmer, but still, it is, um, it is excellent. And now you're going to say to yourself when you see me, or you maybe saw when I when I when I plated this up that the herbs had kind of wilted a little bit. It's actually okay. It doesn't hurt the final look of the pasta, especially when you put cheese and some of these breadcrumbs on top of it. But it helps. The cheese actually helps the herbs stick to the pasta itself. As you can see, you see how it kind of sticks there. Now, you don't want too much cheese. There is such a thing as too much Parmesan cheese on this particular dish. And I'm just not a fan of too much. It hides all of the other flavors. You don't want to do that. Balance is key. And with those breadcrumbs on there, we create other texture levels. All right, here we go. Hmm. Oh boy. And there's heat from those hot peppers. Ah, it's just so good. You gotta try this. I have other variations on this, okay? And I'm going to put other videos up and I'm gonna refer back to this video too, all right? There's just so many different variations and, and ways to go with this particular dish that I wanna share with you. It's one of my favorites. It's going to be in my, uh, in my cookbook, Mama Marucci's The American Italian Experience. Uh, but I want you to try this, all right? You got to go out and get the, the ingredients for this are very, very inexpensive. You have, except for the cheese, maybe pappardelle. When I get a good pappardelle, and it was like $3 for that bag, it's nothing. A little bit of mint, some basil. You can grow that in the backyard. If you have a lemon from a friend, you can use that. The only thing that you're really going to spend the money on is the cheese because even you can go to a pizza place and get the red pepper flakes and add them in. You get your, get yourself a packet. If, if you really want to do it on the cheap, that's all you need. And a little bit of salt and some water. The only thing you have to pay for is the Parmesan cheese. I urge you to use genuine Parmigiano Reggiano. Don't use cheap um, don't use cheap cheese. It's just not that good. Use it for use that cheese for something else. Use it when it doesn't matter. Um, give it to children. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You don't want to do that to your children. Hmm. You actually want to feed your children great food. Why? Because when they go out and they taste the garbage that's out there in the restaurants, <clears throat> they'll want to come home. They'll want to cook their own food. They'll want to eat what you cooked for them. I know my nephew does. Whenever I cook, <clears throat> he wants to eat it. There's no way he's eating Italian out and enjoying it. And that is my goal. It's actually my goal with a, a lot of different cuisines. Because I study cuisines of the world and see how they fit together. But I'm just doing Italian food free because that's my passion. I really love Italian food or Italian inspired food. Um, so anyway, give the real Parmigiano Reggiano to your kids. That way, when they go to their friend's house, 
and they have the the green canister or they have some I don't know lesser form of cheese your child is not gonna say anything hopefully but they're gonna taste that and go it's just it's just not good I get better at home it used to be you would go out to have a special occasion and to eat well today everybody eats out and they stay home to make something special and good it should be the exact opposite but unfortunately that's not the case with our excuse me with our busy lifestyles but this particular pasta you can make up in just a couple of seconds and done deal within 10 minutes this pasta should be ready so go out and make it make it for your kids make it for your loved ones this is like a double portion here believe it or not but that's not going to stop me from eating the rest of it all right have a great day thanks for your time thanks for your attention thanks for your comments thanks for hitting the thumbs up and subscribing thanks for hitting the bell and uh, i'll see you again very 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 soon thanks Bye-bye.